TLDR, St. Louis is a hot mess. We have walkie-talkies in our classroom, and there's this one, and I got it today. But it, um, it, anytime you, like, touch it in a certain way, it'll go, um, power on, 16. Because that's the channel we're on, so it's like, power on, power, power on, power on, 16. It's like, oh my god, I get it. The walkie-talkie's on, thank you. It is, and it's in my pocket, and I almost walked out of the building with it today. (laughs) I mean, as you do. Allie tried to sign out. At, I forgot. Um, like, Allie tried to clock out at work at her school with her gym membership card. So. Look. <laughs> there you go. Things happen. And then she wore her sweatpants on backward to Walmart yesterday, so. <laughs> oh, she sent me that Snapchat. Mm-hmm. She's having a good time. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Uh, did I tell you guys that I am currently holding my back together with kinesio tape and I am allergic to the tape? Yes, he did. Apparently, so that's a thing. <laughs> cool. Oh, here's my update. So, like, Shannon and Shelby are usually always dying, but I, once in a while, oh, am dying. Yeah. And <laughs> so <laughs> I sat down the other day and something went wrong. I don't know what, but my knee basically blew up. And <laughs> now I have a pulled tendon in my knee. And then yesterday I was being so careful going down the stairs one at a time. And then at, like, the fourth from the bottom, I <laughs> just ate shit and <laughs> I hit my head and I hit my shoulder which is still super hurts today I think I have a bruise on my back and um then I like laid on the ground and cried and Peppa came and licked me and then I was like ah! and I called my dad and cried to my dad and then I knocked over a picture of my cousin's dead dog and it was just like it was a time. garbage mess oh man anyway <laughs> yep so Hannah's oh. dying. Yeah. I've got only, like, an slightly. X-shaped rash on my back. I'm supposed to be going on Ambien today, but my insurance I'm so scared company for you. is fighting me, so I, I'm i not. At hold on. Hold on one second. We're recording! Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Hi. The bat. What? The bat? The bat? Baseball bat? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Apparently there's a baseball bat incident. Where is it? I didn't put it there. Okay. <laughs> There's a baseball bat on our kitchen uh, island for, for some cool. reason. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be on Ambien tonight, but my insurance company is throwing a hissy fit, so we will see if I'm going on Ambien tonight. I still have all the Ambien from when they put me on it and then took me off a week later, so... <laughs> that would be helpful if I was in Freeburg, but, but I But you not. are not. <laughs> so, yep. Sorry. <laughs> No, it's fine. Ooh. Like, they do cover it, so I'm hoping this is just a formality, but it's still, it's Friday. It's probably just because Ambien has a lot of, like, warnings and stuff, and so they want to make sure that you tried every other possible option. Which, like, they're my insurance company. How dare they tell me what I'm supposed to be doing with my health, but okay. Uh, yeah, That's but what they my doctor do is that. for. Like, whatever. That's capitalism, baby girl. <sighs> I was yeah. going to say, my uh, migraine medicine my doctor has to pretty much send a note every single month telling the insurance company, yes, you need to refill this. Yes, we've tried everything else. Yes, this is what she has to be on. Yeah, that's just fucking stupid. Because it's been out for, like, less than five years, so the insurance company is like, well, we don't know. And I'm like, I'm not going to sue anybody because of the side effects, I promise. Well, and if you did, you wouldn't be suing the insurance company. Right? I'm like, and yes, it's expensive for y'all. I don't care. It's That's your job. (laughs) But the thing is, is, like, if, even with insurance paying it, it is still $50 a month. Yeah. Like, I had to get a savings card just so I could afford this medicine, so. Yeah. yeah. I just like to throw myself down the stairs periodically. Just yeah. Just keep things <laughs> Yeah. I just you wanna, know. I just want to sleep, you know? Like, that's really it. Shannon, and that's a lot to ask for, and I think you really need yeah. to check your priorities. Yeah, apparently. Right? Like. Yeah. But yeah, it's already this is 2021. We don't sleep anymore. Yeah, it's already 3 p.m. on a Friday, so I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to get an answer today, which is really pissing me off. But yeah, that's really annoying. <sighs> it's fine. 
Anyway, this has been Ailment Corner, so... Yeah, I haven't even done the introduction yet. Like... I know, let's get to it. <laughs> Not trying to pressure you or anything, but my... Well, <laughs> <laughs> all right let's and we're go we're doing two episodes today okay yeah and i, I have four pages of pages. notes for mine unlike my usual page so i have i need sorry like six or seven as we're always. gonna do oh, this no. all right let's go okay hi everybody you're listening to the triad where we are spooky but sensitive i am shannon i'm shelby i'm hannah yay okay so, we kind of did all of our announcements already. Uh, <laughs> uh, the only other one is that we are debating creating a Discord server for our Patreon members. Um, but currently, we have one, one. patron. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> we're going to float the idea out there and just see if people are interested. And if they are, we will make it. And if not, we will not. Because I don't want to put the effort in if we're yes, not going to Yes, DM it. us. Yeah. Yes, DM. please let us know like, if that's something you would be interested in. It would be a lower yeah. tier on the Patreon, and basically it, it would just be... It would probably be, be the lowest tier, yeah. which I think basically, we Basically, we would just create a Discord server, send you guys the link, and we would interact with it. You guys can interact with it, interact with the other members in you it. Tell um, us what we got wrong. <laughs> yes. How we mispronounced everything. Yeah. How... Yeah, it's basically just a way for, like, Garbage us to better reach our listeners oh. sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Plus, we just want to have more rewards available on Patreon, but we're yeah. tired and can't come up with stuff <laughs> right. that creative. So I was going to yeah. say, we're tired and we're busy. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, did we have any other announcements or was that it? I think, I think that, that was, was it. it. Okay, cool. Okay, so. Oh, I got the COVID shot. The first one. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Yay. I signed up for mine because now that I'm a substitute teacher... I count as an educator, so that puts me in a higher tier. Woo! Yeah, you'd think having severe asthma would put you in a higher tier, but it does not. So. It's fine, my Shannon, just part-time die. Part-time job just that don't I don't go, go to outside. is more important than your life, Shannon. Yeah, apparently. Right, or like, the state of Illinois. my unofficial job that I get to pick and choose what days I work. Mm-hmm. That is the other thing, though. I live in, uh, I almost said Missouri. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't live in Missouri, bud. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. I live in Maine, where yes. COVID is hardly a thing. That's not true, but... Okay, yep. <laughs> so I have a PowerPoint and an outline yes. as per usual. Oh, did you guys see my text today about the PowerPoints? Yes. <laughs> you sent us a text about PowerPoint? Well, I in the Facebook did. In the Facebook group chat. Look, you guys send so much stuff in there, I cannot keep up. <laughs> my new job basically involves making PowerPoints and coloring Lisa Frank coloring books. I love so, that for you. I Are we going into your research folder or the episodes folder? The episodes folder. Cool. It's episode 30. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so... We are going to be talking about the St. Louis Jane Doe. Have either of you heard of this? I, I know where St. Louis is. <laughs> okay. I straight up, like, took a screenshot of a, like, news headline for St. Louis, or, like, a, um, like, a website link or whatever, one of those clickbait things, and it says St. Louis Jane Doe, and it was, like, mysteries in St. Louis, and I was like, I'm gonna do that for one of my things, so now I won't. It was already on my dibs list, so if you had done it, I would have been really mad. (laughs) If you think that Shelby and I have ever read that damn list, then (laughs) you are out of your mind. See, no, I I actually went through the list the other day just to make sure that the one that I did do for this week um, was not on anyone's list. But, yeah, no, because I was going through a website and it was, like, interesting things that have happened in St. Louis. Or, like, I think it's that, like, only in your state um, Mm -hmm website or whatever and I was going through all the ones that were like weird things or spooky things and this was just one of them so okay but do you know okay. anything about it or no do you just know, like, no I haven't okay. actually done any of the research for it okay. I just know the name yeah okay I didn't know that this happened either um which I meant to ask my mom if she remembers this happening I doubt that she does because my mom's memory is non-existent um, <laughs> but I meant to ask her and I forgot um But, yeah, I found this because I was, I think I was just looking up, like, there's, like, a Wikipedia page of unsolved murders, and I think I was looking through it trying to find topics, I think was how I found this. I don't remember. Uh Um, But I found it through, like, Wikipedia, not through anybody telling me about it. So, 
I was gonna say I've never heard anyone actually say anything about this. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I've and never I know heard we don't this. live in St. Louis, but we're very close and like yeah. You that's our like point of reference. If people don't know where we're from, which we is everyone, we just say St. Louis because yeah. it's the it's major like metropolitan area. like twenty minutes. Area. So yeah, um, we live in the so cornfield yeah. outside St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys already know this because I've brought this up. This one's rough. I'm sorry, um, but. And by rough, I it's mean, fine. I like, had my big cry yesterday really when I fell down depressing. the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I just think it needs to be covered because it is still an unsolved murder. Um, and I don't know. I just wanted to cover it. So Sounds good. Yeah. My sources are Wikipedia, um, a couple of um, STL Today articles, a Riverfront Times article, an article from the local Fox station. Um, and then an entry from the Doe Network and stuff from the FBI. So, if you want to go to the next slide, I know that's kind of hard to read just because of how big the thing is, but that is the location of where this occurred. So, that's, is on that February Forest Park? 20... Yes, that's Forest Park. Okay. Yeah. So, on February 28th, 1983... Uh, two men entered an abandoned apartment building at 5635 Clemens Avenue in St. Louis looking for scrap metal that they could use to fix their broken down car. Because it was the 80s and that was just a thing that you did apparently. <laughs> um, Look. <laughs> so after going into the basement, uh, one of the men lit a cigarette, which illuminated a decapitated body lying on the ground. Oh God! How bright was that cigarette? I think it was, like, pretty close to them. And it was, yeah. like, a lighter, so... Well, yeah, the lighter or the yeah. match or whatever they yeah. used. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the body was of an African-American girl. Um, they didn't know her age at the time. Um, they initially assumed she was an adult. Uh, she was naked except for a yellow sweater, and her hands were tied behind her back with red and white nylon rope. The two men immediately called the police, who arrived and began to investigate. So the next slide, just so you know, this is, like photo evidence of the thing of her sweater and i thought about not having it in like involved in the slideshow but then i was like this girl was murdered we can look at a sweater you yeah. know i just felt disingenuous to not have it in here i don't know anyway well, i so, think for the three of us at least we've watched yeah, enough like, us, crime like, shows <laughs> It's yeah. okay but yeah. yeah like i'm not going to post this on instagram are those her hands yes those are her hands Okay. Yeah, these are pretty much like the only crime scene photos we have for some reason. It's a big whole thing. So, uh, once police arrived on the scene, for various reasons, police initially assumed she was a sex worker. Uh, but upon okay. examining the body, they discovered that she was between 8 and 11 years old. Yeah, okay, dicks. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, but an 8 to 11 year old does not look... Like, size-wise, they are a child. Well, that's the thing. She's really tall for an 8 to 11-year-old. Okay. So, like, okay. yeah, I know. Maybe I'll give them that then. And but. she was lying on her front, so, like, they couldn't tell if she had breasts or not. And so, like, they just assumed because of her height that she was an adult. I guess. But, and then, like, maybe from, like, if she's tied up and stuff. If and she she's, only like, had curled a sweater up or and whatever. She's got the, yeah, so it was, like, like I said, there are reasons for them thinking that i guess for an initial thought i will yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah they discovered she was between 8 and 11 years old she had red and purple nail polish and she was wearing that bloody sweater that was pretty much it for physical evidence uh the only blood found at the scene was on like the walls where the killer had dragged her body downstairs which led police to believe that she had been killed elsewhere and they couldn't get dental records because her head was missing and to this day has not been found. Oh, I didn't realize it was missing. I said, yeah. I just thought, well, I, I, I know you said she was decapitated. I just yeah. assumed it was there. Nope. Nope. It's <laughs> gone. Oh, God. We've never, That's yeah, so much never worse. Found it. Yeah. Um, <gasps> oh, yeah. And then like on that. top of this, there were no local missing child reports that match her description. And police eventually accounted for every child who matched her description in area school districts, so she probably wasn't from St. Louis. Um, and that... Um, and this in, was in an abandoned warehouse? 
In an abandoned apartment building. Apartment building. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and then probably some sort of drifter or something. Not we, her, but... Yeah. Well, she may have been too. Um, we get into it later. She was not from the St. Louis area. They were able to figure that out, which I'll get into way later. Okay. Oh my god, does it include teeth? We don't have oh, any wait, teeth. Have a- oh my god, I'm so <laughs> fucking stupid. Have I, been, have I ever told you guys about that building oh in god. Valdosta Kill where they me. found the teeth in the walls? Maybe. I don't remember. Is it remember. a dentist office? <laughs> no, it was. No, I'm um, not even kidding. Yeah, it, they used to <laughs> Well, because they, it was like in downtown Valdosta where I used to live in Georgia and it, um, it was one of the old historic buildings down there and it had been a dentist's office like way long ago and, um, they were renovating it because they're trying to like revamp the downtown area. When they opened up the walls, it was like four feet deep of teeth. Oh God. Nice. Yeah. Oh, my cabinet in my, uh in the bathroom up here has one of those slots where you stick your razor in when you're done mm-hmm. your razor blade i oh, want to open yeah, the wall yeah. <laughs> see how many <laughs> razors are there okay but really quick here's why i was thinking of teeth because i just started watching the new um unsolved mysteries and that's mm-hmm. how they found out well they never it, it was the case is still unsolved clearly but um they found out where this person may have been born based mm-hmm. on the amount of radiation in her teeth yeah yeah, they do something similar to that, which, uh, so again, cool. I'm going to get into it later. Yes, yes. Um, that's one of those just... science things I don't understand, but it's that's so, literally... so cool. My note for it is, I don't know how, but it does this, because <laughs> right. I don't understand how it works. Um, something, something, something. Science. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm always just like, science magic shit. Basically, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so, yeah. There's basically no physical evidence on the scene, so they remove her body for a medical examination. So the medical examiner noted that the girl had spina bifida occulta, which is the mildest type of spina bifida. So just in case people don't know, because I didn't know actually, like, I knew it was a problem with your spine, but I didn't know, like, what exactly it was. Um, Mm -hmm. Spina bifida is a birth defect where there is an incomplete closing of the spine and membranes around the spinal cord, so things just aren't as protected as they should be basically um and the kind she had is often asymptomatic so there's a good chance she didn't even know that she had it um and then this part's gross but it's relevant so (laughs) there was mold growing on her uh decapitation wound and uh the missouri botanical garden (laughs) tested it and they determined she had been killed around five days before she was discovered um First of all, I love the botanical garden here. Mm-hmm. They do so much research and so much good. I also know a kid who works there. Um, he's one of my managers at my store. Um, Peppa's typing on my keyboard, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but also just, like, that's so cool that, like, it's not even really, like, a... Um, I don't... Like a criminal justice organization yeah. no, it's literally it's just all. like and i know that it's like mold and moss and stuff like that and so mm-hmm. that is kind of like the botanical gardens forte but it's just always cool to me when they do things like that yeah and, yeah, yeah. Anyway. and i mean that was pretty much all the information they were able to gather from the scene and from the body so if you can go to the next slide there wasn't much else to do at that point so she was buried at washington park cemetery on december 2nd 1983 uh, she became known as a Jane Doe, um, but she's also referred to as Little Jane Doe and Hope. So, and what? Hope. Hope. H O P. Hope. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you said Hoke, and I no. like with a K, and I was like, "What does that mean?" No. <laughs> that right. seems insensitive. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, what? So, after you know her discovery, they obviously began investigating what they could, and so. I have a couple points I want to get into before we talk about the investigation. So one of them, like, I have a lot of sources. None of them are critical of the police. And I'm not saying that they have to be. Like, right? Like, and it's just odd to me that all of the sources I found, they really didn't have a bad thing to say about how the police handled this. And you know me, I prefer getting as clear a picture as I can. And I am of the opinion that a lot of unsolved crimes are unsolved because of police incompetence. Yeah. I don't necessarily, and I'm not saying that that's the case here. 
I am just saying. But it is odd to have an unsolved case that doesn't have that as a component. Exactly. And so, like, I am just pointing out that it is going to sound like, and I, I do think that the police did everything that they could. I just wasn't able to find anything. Because this isn't, like, a big story anymore. And, like, all the sources I have are from St. Louis, like, local reporting. Yeah. And so... I just don't have any sources that were critical of police, so I'm not getting that side of this uh, analysis, which bothers me personally, and I just wanted to point it out. Um, okay. So, what year was this again? 1983. Okay. But then, like, some of the articles I have are from, like, 2019, because they, like, re-interviewed people and, like, all this stuff. So, Yeah. So I just wanted to I just wanted to point that out. The other thing I want to explain is the geography of St. Louis <laughs> because it is relevant. <laughs> I know okay. we've kind Can of I gotten say into something it. about like we did it in the 1904 Olympic episode. We kind of talked about how St. Louis is stupid, but yeah. Did we talk about the different neighborhoods in St. Louis? That's what I'm going to discuss. Because okay. I have explain. some beef. That's what I'm going <laughs> to explain. Just... Can I just say something really quick just say about it. how yes. <laughs> how the Italians have the hill and it's all nice and the French have uh, Soulard and that's all super nice and bougie but then fucking all the Irish people they put them down in a ditch and it's called Dogtown and uh-huh. I just think that's really <laughs> racist and I'm very upset. Okay but about... also Dogtown is the coolest place in St. Louis. That's where they it's have the cool, parade. But it's also fucking sketch as hell. <laughs> have you ever been to a bar there? They're very scary. Yes. I don't go to bars. Uh, my father... <laughs> has to die my dad <laughs> i just googled it and apparently the term dogtown was widely used in the 1800s by miners to describe a group of small shelters around mines so it's not like racist it. it's I about mines like it. i still don't like it it's a mining term <laughs> okay i'm just but, but, okay where was there a mine in st louis where all Everywhere. the Irish there are mines all over the place what are you talking in about st. Louis? <laughs> yes that's why we had I thought there were just caves underground i thought they weren't i thought they were just natural caves. i don't Fucking, no, okay. I'm, the no, entire no. area is just mines. The entire area. mines and Indian mounds. Full of coal. <laughs> Why do you think our town is sinking into the ground? That's Freeburg. <laughs> That's in Illinois. I'm talking about St. Louis. Yes. D- okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Okay. Let me just get through my little spiel here about how St. Louis is really weird geographically. So, St. Louis proper is very small. And it sits on the Mississippi River. Surrounding it is St. Louis County. St. Louis is not in a county. It just functions on its own. It is mm-hmm. completely separate from St. Louis County. So, yep. pretty much everything west of Forest Park, which is where the zoo is, and y'all, like, who are listening, please just Google map St. Louis so you can understand what I am explaining. So, basically, everything west of that... Is a di- they're technically different cities, but we, we, like, colloquially call a lot of it St. Louis, unless we're being really specific. Like, yep. like St. Charles like the boroughs is of New St. York Louis. all have different names, but the whole thing is New York. Except kind of, but they're different cities. They're not neighborhoods. Yes. It's essentially that they're kind of like the suburbs of St. Louis, in a way. They but are. They're called... They're their... technically, like, they have their own city limits and things like that. Yeah. They're They've called... just all kind of grown together. Yeah, they're called inner ring suburbs is like the official term for this kind of a suburb so yes. it's not like in chicago So like i'm not going to say where i live now but i used to live in lakeview east like that is a neighborhood it's not a separate city but these smaller cities flow into st louis proper as if they're a neighborhood but they're technically separate yes and then on top of that a lot of places which are technically outside of st louis have st louis addresses because they don't fall within the boundary of any of those other little cities but they're in st louis county so like mm-hmm. Washington University St. Louis has the St. Louis address even though it is one block away from Clayton and it isn't technically within the city line of St. Louis. I did not know that. Yeah. And so... Really? Yeah. Wait, but the art museum's in St. Louis. Yeah, it's in Forest Park. That's in St. Louis. I know. Washington... It's... Yeah. It's across the street. Yeah. That's weird. That's why it's stupid. Okay. 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 (laughs) Well, and that's the thing. Some Wash U buildings do have a Clayton address. It's just a mess. And then, like, so my next point, the house where Jane Doe was found is within the boundary of St. Louis, but it's, like, three blocks away from University City and the Loop. 
just to give you like a different perspective on it for you two at least and like even some Wait, places can you say that again i was so like you know where the del mar again. loop you know where that is yeah, yeah that's yeah. technically yeah. university <laughs> city and her house for she was found well her house quote unquote the house she was found is a couple blocks away from there but it's still technically st oh. louis it's just a mess. Wait, and I need so, to look this map again. <laughs> and so, like, I'm bringing this up because... This is just stupid. That's all you need to know. Yeah, and, like, I am bringing this up for a reason. So some of the police officers don't work for St. Louis. Some of the people who are interviewed don't live in St. Louis, but they work or live in these other cities, but because there's so much overlap, it makes sense that they would be involved. And then it's also just, like, really confusing as to what is actually in St. Louis. So, like, on our side of the river, that whole thing is St. Louis. Because, like, we don't know how to, like, differentiate unless it's very, very clearly something different. Yeah, I will say when I did my internship with the St. Louis County Police, um, like, all of the ride-alongs that I did um, were in all of those, like, little outer cities. Mm -hmm. um, Because the county police basically, like... They have no well, they, restriction over St. Louis because they're not in St. Louis. But they Louis do the county. because the city police and the county police actually work together. They use the same facilities. Yeah. So the county police, like, don't have the jurisdiction, but they use the same prison and they use mm-hmm. the same, like, um, like fingerprint analysis unit and mm-hmm. the, like, uh, crime scene units and everything. Those are all, they basically share them with the city police. Yeah. Um, and each of those, like, little outer cities has their own little police department, but the county police also work yeah. out of each of those departments. Yeah. So, so it's very TLDR, weird. St. Louis is a hot mess. Like, the closest thing I know of, at least within the U.S., is, like, the closest example for people is, like, Los Angeles. Like, it has a lot of those other cities that just butt up against each other. Yeah, because I never understand what people from California are talking about, because they're like, oh, that was in Pasadena, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, that's probably a real city, but it's, no, it like, is. whenever they're talking, <laughs> whenever they're talking about LA, they'll name, like, four, like, Different Bakersfield, cities. or, yeah, like, stuff like that, and I'm like, I don't, can Yeah, you well, I mean, normal? even when we lived, like. I mean, Atlanta does that, too. I think it's just a city thing. Because, like, in Atlanta, they'll be like, oh, I'm from Marietta, and I'm like, D- that's Atlanta. And they're like, well, no, it's not. And I'm like, but it is. Yeah. And, I mean, even, so. like, we lived in the L.A. area when I was an infant, and I think we lived in, like, Santa Monica or something. We didn't live in L.A., but you just say you're in the L.A. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. easier. In the L.A. You, I meant that <laughs> L.A. area, and then I forgot the area part. <laughs> um, I know. I was just going to let it go. Yeah, that was that was the closest example I could think of off the top of my head because, like, obviously we know that, like, Hollywood and Los Angeles are two different cities, but, like, at least for, like, people I know, that's all L.A., all of it. It's just, we're not from there. It's just easier. <laughs> yep. So, it's just a hot mess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and, yeah, so, like, some of these people who I'm going to mention don't work. I don't, I literally don't know which police department they work for. <laughs> they just. Yeah our police so i mean they all work together in the area as well especially if it's a case kind of like this where they're the jurisdiction's not exactly clear yeah it's just um basically it's like one department will have the jurisdiction but they will work with the other departments in the area especially if they're like looking for evidence in those other little cities and stuff because i mean in those cities that's the other police department's jurisdiction so they need the cooperation and stuff like that yeah yeah st louis is just a hot mess and that was the end of that point yep so back to the actual investigation let's not even start with east st louis (laughs) oh god we're not even gonna get into that (sighs) i just feel bad for east st louis because yeah america (laughs) white people suck anyway moving on i mean yeah yeah um, which also, just as a point, East St. Louis and St. Louis are different cities. I've had people tell me that they're not. Uh, they're in different states. That's what I said. <laughs> they but... <laughs> are literally divided by a river. Yeah, that's what I said. But somebody said, it has St. Louis in the name. And I'm like, why the fuck they does are that matter? different cities. It's a different whatever. <laughs> they have different matter. tax rates. They have different They're police. in a different fucking state. They physically cannot be the same actual city. Like, they even Kansas government. City, like, Kansas City, which straddles the border, they're technically different cities because they are in different states. That's how yep. that works. Anyway, yep. so, uh, <laughs> the lead detectives on this case were named Joe Burgoon, I believe is how you say his last name, and Herb 
Riley, and like Herb. Yes, <laughs> and like again, every source I had, none of them were critical of the police. I'm not saying that they should have been. I'm just saying I do not have that angle of their work, I suppose. And I don't know enough about this to be critical of them. But this is factual. They worked unbelievably hard trying to solve this case, which is also why I think they weren't, they didn't get super critical press coverage because they did work insanely hard on this case. So if you can go to the next slide. Uh, this is, crap, I forgot to see who the white guy was. The not white guy is um, <laughs> an assistant. Um, he was an assistant. He was a rookie officer named Leroy Adkins. He also, he just assisted on this case. So Joe Burgoon is now retired, but Can he I said to say the- something really quick? Yes. That man is not wearing gloves while holding that evidence. I know. It's 1983. That stresses me out. But also Dude, it's just, covered in blood. Like, put on some gloves. I know. Just wait. It gets, this, it gets worse with the, okay. with the evidence. He's it's, holding up the sweater that Shanna described good. earlier, and he's not wearing gloves. Yeah, it's bad. Um, yeah, so Joe Burgoon is now retired, but he said to the Riverfront Times that not a week goes by where he doesn't think of Jane Doe, and it's been 28 years, roughly. So, mm. no. 38 years? How old are we? Yeah, 30, 38 years. Yeah, I was going to say, we? Well, the 80s were only 20 years ago. Wait a minute. Yeah, 38 years. I can't do math. So, um, Herb Riley died in 1996, but he worked on the case until the day he died, pretty much. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, as I said, they were assisted in part by a rookie officer named Leroy Atkins, who is uh, the man on the right in this photo. He is African-American. He retired in 1992 as a lieutenant colonel and deputy police chief. His son is now also a lieutenant colonel, and he's an assistant oh, chief cool. of the department. So, Lieutenant colonel? Are they in the military? No, you can, You have ranks in... Yeah. In police have ranks. Do you? Yeah. Yes, I'd... Shelby. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know they have rank. I just didn't know they were the same names as the ones mm-hmm. in the Air Force. Pretty much, yeah. Because the army has different ranks, and then the, like, navy and stuff have different, like, names. Mm-hmm. I know they have ranks in the <laughs> police. Yeah. Didn't don't... you work for them? <laughs> I did an internship. Haven't you watched okay. Brooklyn Nine-Nine or SVU? <laughs> Haven't you watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine? <laughs> yes, so I do. Look, <laughs> I'm stupid, okay? This is your weird Air Force discovery of the week. Mine was that y'all have to do the pledge or something before you watch a fucking movie. No, you have to pledge. stand for the national anthem. You have to stand oh, for the yeah, national, national anthem, anthem, which they play over top a video of multiple planes and flags and war footage. And Yeah, that's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. You also have to stop dead, even if you're like on the monkey bars at Even if you're driving at 5 p.m., oh, no, you have to, to stop over. for retreat. No, I knew that. Yeah. Like, that I knew, because my dad And used you have to, to face wherever the flag on base is. Yeah, I knew that. I didn't know the movie theater thing. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. yeah. Also, you can see a movie there for a dollar. Well, hey, there mm-hmm. you go. When we lived in Korea, um, it was 2005, 2006, um, we actually got to see the Star Wars Episode Three the day before it came out in America because the guy who ran the movie theater managed to get it, and because of time zone differences, mm-hmm. we were like a day ahead, so he got them to agree to let us see it the day before. Cool. Sick. And that is my <laughs> cool uh, Air Force <laughs> kid fact of the day, and that's about the only cool thing we had. So. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the reason why Leroy Atkins was so invested in this case on a personal level was that, you know, for some really weird reason, black St. Louis residents at the time believed that the police department cared more about white victims than black ones. That is what? so crazy. <laughs> what? It's almost like oh that's not God. a thing that still happens I today. Know. Yeah, and he wanted to no. uh, dispel that belief, and so he threw himself into this case. Noble effort didn't really work (laughs) yeah so uh the first thing that they did was they basically tried to account for every child who matched her description in the st louis area which is a that's a shit ton of children it took them seven months yeah i'm sure and was so meticulous and time consuming and stressful that one officer had to be hospitalized for migraines i don't know which officer i couldn't find that information and so Beyond that, 
uh, they, it was 1983, there wasn't really a whole lot else they could do, other than follow- Yeah, because it was the 80s, so you had to either call, or go and look for the child, because yeah. there was no, like, oh, well, they there signed There was no the internet, Facebook. or database, or whatever. Well, and I mean, even with that, like, They posted schools... a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, schools weren't keeping as tight a leash on kids, so they couldn't even be, like, who wasn't in school on the, these days. The schools may have been, like, I don't fucking know. Why should we know? They're blowing off steam. Who gives a shit? Yeah, like, it just wasn't... They just... That was back in the days when, like, high schools had a smoking area for students, exactly. so... Exactly. Okay, but my my high school in Florida still had that, so... <laughs> okay, but that's Florida. Florida's a trash state. Yeah. Sorry if you're from there, but not really. I mean, we pretty much trash you know Florida what you are. every single episode. They know. They know our stance on you Florida. You know what you are. You know how... Also, I lived there, so I feel like I have a right to be like, mm-hmm, yeah, they suck. Yeah, so, I mean, other than looking for missing children, which surprisingly, there, it, I, I do think it's weird that there were no... Missing children that fit her description in the St. Louis area for that time. I don't know why. That just seems odd to me. I mean, like, it's a good thing. I don't know. It just seems weird. So, they couldn't do anything else other than follow every single lead that came to them. I wonder if her height had something to do with that, though. Probably. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Because there's probably, like, like, missing children that are, like, oh, a young African-American girl who's 8 to 11 years old. But then, like, you add in that, like, she's 6 feet tall. (laughs) And everyone's well, like, Well, she what? was, I'm, I was going to get into that later. Her height is like between four foot 11 and five, six or something. I can't find it in my thing right now. I don't know why there's such a big discrepancy. Because they don't have her, her head? head. How big is her head? <laughs> well, and it, giving it the smallest possible size proportional to the largest possible size. I mean, size yeah, that was what I assumed it was. It's just a well, big Well, that, gap. and then I wonder if some of it is because, like, the amount of decay on her body, of, and, yeah. like, if she had gone into rigor mortis, if they couldn't get it, like, fully yeah, stretched out during like, the autopsy. Possibly, yeah. I just thought it was a weird thing. But, I mean, even 4 foot 11 for an 8-year-old, that's Ashley's height for an 8-year-old. That's a fairly tall child, you know? Yeah. So, like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because that's how tall I was in fourth grade. So I was like 10, mm-hmm. 9, I 10. I didn't know that. Well, because that was right before I hit my giant growth spurt and ended up in the hospital, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, she had yeah, I was, even know no, cause, was like, I was 4'11", and then in sixth grade, I grew, like, it was like four inches, like, in a month or something to oh, my, my current 5'3", <laughs> and... Then I got super sick with my, like, hormone imbalance and ended up in the hospital, and that's why I stopped growing, because I was supposed to be taller than I am. Mm-hmm. But I stopped growing because my hormones screwed up. Yeah. I never really like, had everyone a... go! Everyone stop. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> basically. Basically. I never Sorry, had a really growth spurt. I just kind of... <laughs> I never had a growth spurt, really. I just kind of stopped getting taller. <laughs> I had a growth spurt that like hurt my hips. Like, I <laughs> Allie's was in, messed like, up with her knee or her uh, heels. Allie's did. I was in like second grade and I was like, I think I'm dying. And my parents <laughs> were like, we should get an X-ray. And then the doctor's like, she's just growing. Like everyone, mm-hmm. calm down about it. And I was like, growing pains hurt? are the absolute worst. Yeah. And I don't know what it is about like the female body, and I can't attest for like any sort of like male anatomy, but for some reason. It seems to be a common thing that, like, when females go through a growth spurt, it just, like, screws up everything. In your hips, in your feet, in your ankles, in your knees. Like, everything hurts all the time for the rest of your life. Yeah, or I didn't you have that problem. just launch yourself down the stairs. Just saying. Just <laughs> yeah, I don't remember having that problem, because, like... I have scoliosis already, so my back was already fucked. But, like, Allison grew from very shrimpy to yes. not shrimpy very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. So she had well, a problem with see, her heels or something. That was my problem. Part of, like, why my hip is so messed up is because of that, like, four-inch growth spurt I had. Because mm-hmm. apparently four inches in a month is too quick. Yeah, Allie That's grew... a lot of inches. Allie went into high school... Literally, she didn't even get her growth spurt until she was, like, 15, either. So she was shrimpy for a while. I remember when she was super short. She was so small. and so With her haircut. Uh, oh, my God. It was great. She and was her dad, four, George. 4'9", four I think. 
No, she wouldn't have been that small. She was less than five feet tall when she went into high school, and now she's like five six or five seven. <laughs> yeah, no, she's very tall. Yeah. Okay. Then anyway. what am I? <laughs> Very tall. You're also Freaking very tall. Amazon? What? Okay. Rude. My okay. sister is also very tall. Compared to us, everyone is tall for the most part. I was gonna so say like... I'm five three. Shannon's five two. Like everybody is tall. I'm five two. At Ashley's three wedding, quarters. I looked like a okay. monster. Like everyone were, else was so yeah. cute and tiny and petite, and then here comes well, this yeah, lumbering Emma, fucking. I was gonna giant. say you see like, pictures yeah. of us hey with guys. Hannah, <laughs> and it's so funny. Yeah, well, because, like, it's Emma like, and Ashley are I both like the weirdo. under five feet tall, Katie's my height, and then you're a lot taller than us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I, I look like I'm the one who's out of whack, but I am average height. It's just yeah. you, tiny Yeah, we're all just people. really short. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I say... You pocket-sized lunatics. I yeah. <laughs> well, I just like to say, I like to point out that I am exactly five, two, and three quarters, because I think my scoliosis made me lose a little bit of height. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I am technically five three and a half, but um, the doctor wrote five eight on my chart the not the other day, but like last time I was there, I was like, oh, excuse me, at that other inch, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a while, a little bit ago, one of the doctors told Alex she was five four, and she was like, "What the fuck? No, I'm not." <laughs> um, that yeah. is like a whole four inches off. Yeah, but okay. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to this investigation. <laughs> Please. We're never going to be done with this. Okay, so, yeah. They couldn't do anything else with physical evidence because there was none, so they followed every lead that came their way. So, uh, a few months after the murder, a woman told police that she had just met the killer. Yuki is hardcore judging me right now. I just sent you a picture. <laughs> so, uh, this man lived a few blocks from where the building was found and then invited this woman into his apartment. He showed her a human skull and a machete... And I don't know if he said anything that implied that he was involved or this woman just assumed it based on the fact that he had a skull and a machete. Yeah, I would I would wonder. Yeah, I would wonder yeah. as well. And so police immediately got a search warrant and they searched the home. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, quote, the machete was a novelty piece you could bend a million ways. It could never cut someone's head off or calls Burgoon, who's that lead investigator, and, uh, quote, he got the skull from his high school teacher in California. It was all verified. He wasn't our guy. End quote. So that went nowhere. So the next. But who brings someone over to their house and is like, I say that as if I wouldn't be that person. But... Okay. I can name several humans off the <laughs> right. top of my head who would do this Who would be like, thing look at this cool school I have. would be impressive to a girl. I could totally see that happening. Shannon. That's true. Yeah. I also am friends with a funeral director slash embalmer so like her whole house is so yes. cool hannah were you gonna say something uh, i thought i heard you si trying to interject i did say but... your name but i can't yes. I... don't you I... I don't know i also do have skulls do. yes now that you say it they're yeah, not real I was ones say, but don't you have skulls <laughs> i have decor skulls they're not real ones <laughs> I was gonna say I just bought a raven skull, but it's decor. It's not real. Yeah, I have fake ones, but I also I don't like show them off to people. <laughs> right? They're just I on... got some. I don't like bring randos home and be like, "Look at this cool school I have." Yeah. I just said that like school. school? It's a skull. I have. It's a weird word. Skulls. Okay, so can I? Okay, wait. Yes. There's this teacher at our school. I'm not gonna name any names, but the way that. She says certain words is it's almost like she's British, but I wonder <laughs> if it's just like a different New England accent. Mm -hmm. It's so confusing because she'll be like, "Okay, everyone, push in your chairs, stand behind your desk. Now we're going to dance." <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Funny. I just it always catches me off guard because everything else will be totally regular like, sounding, and then yeah. then one word will be like, <laughs> "Time to dance." <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <sighs> Words are weird. Okay, so I didn't list out, like, every single lead, because that would have been ridiculous. I just did, like, the most notable ones, you know? Yes. So, um, the next one was an officer in Charlac, which is apparently one of those weird cities that are, 
that's around St. Louis. It's between U what City and Maryland fuck? Heights. I'd never heard of this place before. I've I never Google heard it. of that. But Snorlax? Car- Carlac. C H A R Lac. L A C K. Yeah. It's, it's in between French. French. Is it pronounced like a French way? Is it like Charlock or something? Charlo- I don't know. Char- it's Probably not because French. it's a French. That sounds very French. It's not spelled French. I mean, yeah, it is. C H A R L A C. L A C K. Oh. oh, yeah. I, I missed the K. the K. No, there's a okay. K. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Then a- anyway, know. an officer from that town. Isn't there also a place called Cool Junction or something? There's a Cool Valley or something. Cool Valley, that's what yeah. it is. I always crack up every time I drive to the airport. <laughs> yeah. Cool Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, an officer from that little town got a skull from a man he questioned at a storage unit on St. Charles Rock Road. So this man was named Danny Davis. He was from Pagedale, which is another one of those weird small cities. And it's a few blocks north of the Del Mar Loop. So I've heard of that one. I haven't heard of that one. So it's still in the same area where the body was found. Um, it was only a few blocks away. So Davis told the cop he had bought the skull for $35 in the late 70s at a souvenir gift shop near Northwest Plaza Shopping Center. Uh, he said he had been told that the skull was of a young Indian woman who had been killed by a tomahawk. That is a quote. I'm not placing any, that sounds racist to me the way that he phrased it, but that's just how he said it. Um, (laughs) and so a forensic anthropologist determined it was too old to be Jane Doe's skull. So that was a dead end as well. So, um... Bergoon once sat in on a seance where the psychics attempted to find Jane Doe. And the psychic, I think it was more than one psychic, said that her head was on a boat in the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know if they followed up with that one. I don't know how they could follow up with that because that's very, very vague. But that was what the psychic said. And so... Uh, I was just trying to look up how much... $35 $35 from the 1970s would be in today's money, and I just typed in, how much money was $35? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. I'm having a day. And so, this is the part where people are critical of the police, because this honestly was, like, I get where they were coming from, but it was really fucking stupid. So in 1994, so this was 11 years after the uh, discovery of the body, they're still working this case. Bergoon and Adkins agreed to appear on Sightings, which was a nationally televised, like, it was a nationally syndicated show on, like, it covered the occult and the supernatural. So, this is a quote from a Riverfront Times article. Connected by phone, the homicide detective sat in St. Louis with notepads at the ready while a psychic in Florida entered the mind of Jane Doe. Producers filled in the backdrop with Hitchcockian theme music and shadowy slow-motion footage of children at play. The final product was vague enough to seem eerily real, but it only harmed the investigation. Prior to the show's taping, detectives mailed the psychic the bloodied sweater and the nylon rope used to bind Jane Doe's hands. They never got them back. The evidence was lost in the mail. I'm... So... Okay. Okay. We don't have the sweater anymore. And the sweater had blood on it, which we could have used to test for DNA, which we do have her DNA profile, which I will get into later. But there may have been other people's the blood on the sweater. DNA. Yeah, maybe. Or on the rope. Maybe. Or on the rope, because like nylon rope, like to try and tie that it that tight, creepy. like you would get skin cells on there. Yeah, yeah, it's just gone. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool, 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 uh, cool. this is the part where I ended up going like, When I say this was local, I had a hard time finding, like, detailed news articles that were not from the St. Louis area, because I think at the time, it wasn't that big of a national story. It really I was going to say, it probably wouldn't be, because that was even, like, I don't know. Especially if they didn't know who she was and stuff. And, And, like, they didn't know where she was from. It just wasn't. But I ended up going on... Also because white people are annoying. I mean, yeah, that was a part of it, too. She's black, and, you know, especially... I mean, it's a problem now. It was even more of an issue back in the 80s, where if somebody wasn't white, they didn't count as a victim, basically. Yeah, Um, you don't get the same press coverage. You don't get the same investigative... Yeah. uh, 
it, you don't get the same investigation, I guess. You don't. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I ended up uh, going on on Reddit. There's a subreddit for, like, I think it might be called, like, Unsolved Mysteries or something. It's not for the show. It's for just, like, people to discuss unsolved cases. And there were a couple different threads on this case. And this this act made a lot of people on Reddit very, very angry. <laughs> well, because it's stupid. Like... It is very stupid. Like, it's so stupid. On the other hand, they were fucking desperate because it had been 11 years. <laughs> I mean, I get that yeah. in a way, but, like, still, they should I would rather nailed. fly the psychic out to St. Louis or find yeah. them in St. Louis. And yeah. then... Or, like, drive them the sweater. Like, there are just right, other like, ways of going about this. That needs to be, like, secured somehow. Because yeah. that is... It's I, important. I yeah. Especially in 94 what did I say, 94? Like, DNA was kind of starting to be a thing at that time. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, this was probably the biggest, like, visible blunder that we know of. You know what I mean? Well, and for it to be, like, on a TV show and stuff, like, that's... Yeah. it's That's just dumb. Yeah, it's bad. Um, So, yeah, we don't have the sweater or the nylon rope anymore. No idea where it is. No idea what happened to it. It's just gone. Cool. So, the next big lead is in 2002. So, in 2002, a Kansas City insurance investigator named Sharon Nolte contacted detectives. She had been working the case independently for seven years and had deduced that Jane Doe was actually a missing Chippewa Indian woman named Shannon Johnson. She had gone so far as to collect a DNA sample from a woman she believed to be related to Shannon Johnson and therefore Jane Doe. She also claimed that she had visited the killer and that he was a drifter living in southern Texas. She said that she had visited him and collected DNA evidence from his bathroom. She herself paid for a private lab to test the DNA sample she had collected against DNA we had from Jane Doe. All of it came back negative, but she refuses to admit that she was incorrect in her findings. (laughs) Um, Okay. So. But also, like, what was she investigating that she got all of that random information? I have no idea. There is, like, I'm trying to, one of the articles. That all just seems like it's so specific. Yeah, it is. That Um, it's like, but how? Yeah. How did you reach that conclusion? One of the articles went into this in a little bit more detail than I am going into, but it still doesn't answer your question or else I would have put it in here. Yeah. No, um, you're good. You're good. It I wasn't just... helpful information. Yeah. Yeah. So the Weird. next one is uh, in July 2004, a death row inmate named Tommy Lynn Sells claimed to have committed dozens of murders across the country, including five in Missouri. So if you can go to the next slide, this is Tommy Lynn Sells. He looks like a guy I go to law school with right now, and it's really freaking me out. Like, he looks a lot like a guy I go to law school with. <laughs> um. But yeah, so St. Louis. Detective. He also just looks like your average like red dick. He does. It's he's just one of those people that you cover up one side of his face and he's sad, and then the other side and he's crazy. Yeah, it's very unsettling. Um, Ooh, you right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he's got one, so... uh, one wide eye and one little eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he was in prison in Texas. So St. Louis detectives flew to Texas to interview him, but they doubted his involvement saying quote he'll claim anything whatever you case and put in front of him he'll say it could be me so they just couldn't take him seriously right i mean people do this a lot whenever they're on death row they'll just start claiming Uh, murders for various reasons they had no reason to believe he was involved in this one so yeah it probably wasn't him the person with the biggest chance of being the murderer was a guy named vernon brown so if you go to the next slide this is vernon brown this dude doesn't even have like a wikipedia page so i had to get information from sources i don't normally get them from such as like the county website (laughs) so he was found guilty in 1988 of the murder of two girls one age nine and one age 19 Uh, Both of these victims have been attacked and murdered in basements, and both occurred in St. Louis. One was in 1985, and one was in 86. And remember, our Jane Doe was in 83. So he was executed in 2005, and he never confessed to the murder of Jane Doe. Also, 
I just put this in here because it freaked me out. Uh, his, <clears throat> excuse me. His last meal was listed on the Clark County Prosecutor website. I just thought it was weird. Um, and his last Wait, meal. What was it? It, I'm going to tell oh, you, sorry. it was shrimp, french fries, salad, and cake. I don't know what kind of cake. It didn't say. I just thought it was weird. I'm sorry. Who has salad for their last meal? I don't know. This guy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, investigators, so like, they interviewed him about Jane Doe, but like I said, he never confessed. Um, I don't even know if he gave them any information that could actually tie him to the murder. He just had other cases that were similar enough that they thought that he could be the killer. Um, but he claimed to have a very low IQ and a head injury, which caused severe memory issues. Um, he actually used this to get an emergency stay of execution, but that was overturned like the next day or something. But then on top of that, he also claimed to have been a PCP user. You know, I mean, like a lot of criminals, his statements are very inconsistent and uh, you don't really know what to believe like, with what he is actually saying about himself. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we don't know. Um, but this is the only named suspect we currently have. Um, and, I mean, it's possible. And this is the... He's the guy that... And, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying Reddit is an authority on anything. Most of the people on this subreddit lean more toward him. But, again, it's just because he's the only person that the police identified. Right? It's not like they're coming up with it on their own. Um... But now he's dead, so we will never know. Uh, at least on his end. Like, there's nothing else that he can tell us. So, that's pretty much it on, like, the big leads. But there have been more recent developments. So, if you can go to the last slide. So, in early 2013, investigators decided to exhume her body in the hopes of uncovering more evidence. So, as I said earlier, she had been buried at Washington Park Cemetery in December of 1983. She was initially buried in an unmarked grave, but a few months after her burial, high school students from Livingston, Illinois, launched a letter writing campaign urging city officials to place a marker, which they did, and then a local monument company donated, like, a headstone for her. So she did have, like, mm -hmm. a set marked area for her. The thing is, <laughs> uh, Washington Park Cemetery was a hot mess and a half. So in 1991... The cemetery's Great. owner, Virginia Younger, uh, she completed suicide shortly after the state's attorney general sued over botched burials. Uh, the allegations included reports of bones strewn about the property, bodies missing what? from graves, and multiple caskets dumped into the same plots. <laughs> and then two years after that, in 1993, the cemetery faced further upheaval when thousands of bodies were disinterred to make way for the Metrolink and to level a hill that obstructed air traffic at nearby Lambert Airport. Wait, a hill disrupted air traffic? That's what it said in the article. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, in the it Midwest, could. I mean, that area, no. I mean, St. Louis isn't flat. It's not. But it's also not hilly. Over by Lambert, it kind of is. Yeah. I guess you know, cool junction or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, dip. I... I don't know. I don't know. That's just Who what it knows? said. That's just Who what knows? the article said. I don't know. Either way, a bunch of bodies had to be moved to make way for these other things. So, between then and 2013, the cemetery was not maintained, and the area was overgrown and full of dumped tires and furniture. And that's what this picture is. I mean, you can see a headstone and then just grass everywhere and that was basically what the cemetery looks like dude my parents when we were about to move to the st louis area my mom would not shut up about like if you girls ever find a refrigerator an empty refrigerator do not go inside of it because she was convinced that like everywhere every corner would have like a shit ton of trash and that <laughs> emma and i would get into a um refrigerator and that it would seal shut and then we would suffocate. It was like her biggest fear. I remember her telling us this at least four times. That is so oh, specific. so weird. I know. <laughs> Mom anxieties though I guess. Yeah. We must not have a great reputation of people not from the Midwest then, huh? Right? She's no. like, there's just gonna be refrigerators everywhere. <laughs> We're like, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so when the exhumation crew went to the side of her grave, the site of her grave, not the side, sorry, they discovered that instead of just one body, there were three. 
in three separate caskets because the marker oh. had been placed at the wrong spot. <laughs> oh my god. So <laughs> they did find her grave a few months later. So there was a 23 year old. Did rec- they have to like dig everyone else up first? No, or? I'm, I'm literally about to tell you what happened. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so, I'm sorry. I've jumped the gun eight okay. times already. I can't help it. I just have questions. I know. I'm literally about to tell you. So there was a 23-year-old research associate named Abby Stolinu, I think is how you say your last name, in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Wash U. She led a team which used old newspaper photos from the funeral and modern aerial images, like from satellites, from the U.S. Geological Survey to find it. So she basically just tried to match stuff up with pictures and then use satellite images to match that up better. And she was able to find the grave within a few months, which I think is pretty dang cool. So That is cool. Yeah, her remains, uh, after they found her, uh, she was exhumed. Her remains were examined by researchers from the University of North Texas and from the Smithsonian. So they tested for DNA, which they already had, but the initial DNA analysis had been done in the early 2000s and... I mean, DNA technology is advancing so quickly. It was advancing even, it, yeah, between 2000 and 2013, it would have been completely different results. And so what they also did, this is the science part that I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> they performed a stable isotope analysis to try to narrow down the girl's origins based on the water that she drank. So basically, the test looks for minerals in your remains, I think it looks in the bones, uh, to determine what area of the country her drinking water had come from, because there's different minerals in your drinking water in different parts of the country. And so, like, I don't know how that works, but it's so cool. (laughs) Um, Well, there's got to be, like, different amounts of, like, calcium and... Well, yeah, I know that. I just mean, like, like, I don't, I just don't... I don't understand science. Like, I understand that there's, like, different things in different parts of the country. It's just weird to me. Um, Like, I get it. It's just, like... But I also just, like... It had been... uh, What's that math? 30 years since uh, she had been buried. So I'm just like, how... What remains did she have left that they could even do this? I just thought it was really cool. So... I mean, the bones are still there. And that's what you would use for the... Yeah. I just thought it was cool... Anyway. No, it is super cool. It's magic. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The DNA testing didn't uncover anything new, but the mineral test revealed that Jane Doe was likely from the southeastern United States, more specifically uh, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Tennessee, and the Carolinas are all possibilities. And, like, that sounds like a lot of area, but, like, it's really not. (laughs) And that narrows down, like, a lot of land within the United States. And so um, after they were finished testing her remains, she was reinterred at the Garden of Innocence at Calvary Cemetery, which uh, this is an area of that cemetery that is maintained by a nonprofit and is specifically for unidentified persons. So her grave is not going to be just abandoned anymore, which is good. Well, that's good. Yeah. And so I just wanted to round this off with just like where things stand today, like with her investigation and what information we know so the evidence that we do have and this is from her entry on the doe network excuse me so we have a full dna profile we have finger and toe prints um we have her mitochondrial dna and that's the dna that only tracks maternal lineage Mm -hmm. so this has been entered into the namus database and it performs monthly searches for a match um it hasn't found one yet Researchers had also checked this against the database of criminal offenders in Missouri in 2013, but they didn't find a match then. And in 2013, a national search of such a, of like such a sample wasn't feasible because we didn't have like a national database at the time, or at least not a robust one. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they tested that since then. I'm assuming that they have because this is still like this is a cold case and they are still kind of trying to work on it. So, uh, yeah, she was between 8 and 11 years old. Her height was between 4'10 and 5'6, and her weight at the time of her death was 60 to 70 pounds. And so with the investigation, um, in 2019, St. Louis established a cold case unit, and her case was transferred there. Um, And St. Louis police are still just like, I don't know if haunted is the right word, but this case is still in the back of their heads pretty much all the time. So for about 12 years after the discovery 
Burgoon sent out teletype bulletins to police departments in all 50 states on the anniversary of her discovery, which is February 28th. No one ever responded, and he was eventually told to stop because they were too expensive. And even today, um, homicide detectives observe the anniversary of her discovery in hushed tones of remorse. Like, this is still weighing on them that they can't figure out who this girl is or who killed her. Um, That's so weird that we've never heard of it. I know! Yeah. But, like, it's also kind of not because we're white. Fair. You know, at least, like, for me, because, like... I don't want to say, like... But it is also kind of interesting that they do still, like, talk about it and remember mm-hmm. it because she is not white. Yeah. Um, and this is St. Louis. Yeah. Um, so that that is interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if anybody knows anything, um, the St. Yeah, Louis... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, contact the St. Louis Police Department Homicide Unit at 314-444-5371. They haven't had a meaningful tip in 10 to 15 years, so they'll take pretty much anything. And that is a direct quote from the head of the St. Louis Homicide Division. Nice. So they are still, I mean, they're working on it as much as they can work on a almost 40-year-old cold case. Um, Yeah. And they did take it seriously, which, I mean, as you said, it is weird that they did, but it's good that they did. Yeah, like, I'm not not saying that they shouldn't have. I'm just saying that, like... Given the history of St. Louis and just America in general, it is interesting that they took it as seriously as they did. And I'm glad that they did. And they should. I think part of it... For every other case. Yeah. Part of it is that they got lucky and got a lead investigator that was going to take it seriously. Yeah. You know, because with a lot of other investigators, they wouldn't have. I think part of it, too, is that she is a child. Yeah. And I don't know. And she was such a young one, And she was so young. And then I think a lot of... The investigators, at least the police who, like, first arrived on the scene, they felt really bad that they initially thought that she was a sex worker. Yeah. So, I don't know if that played into it either. Um, But, yeah, they took this case incredibly seriously, which is good. Um, Yeah, for sure. And they should be taking more cases seriously because, like, I mean, black citizens of St. Louis, I mean, they believe that they are... You know, treated differently than white citizens, and they they have they full are. support for that belief. Yeah, that is not. An I was going to say there, that is a very grounded in facts. Belief. Yeah, especially in St. It Louis. Is not. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 And so that's all. Do I you have. ever think about the fact that, like, obviously we're living through very historical times, mm-hmm. um, but do you ever think about the fact that, like, basically Ferguson was kind of the catalyst mm-hmm. for? All of this, like, I'm not saying yeah. things didn't happen before, but Ferguson was, like, the catalyst, and we live here. Yeah. I mean, Allie was at Umsel when Ferguson happened. That was only, that's a yeah. five-minute drive. Not even. So, yeah. It's very, very weird. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, just know that, like, St. Louis is very divided yeah. at times. So is, I mean, it's physically segregated. And Chicago is, too. Like, this isn't, Yeah, you know, they are still very. They're still very physically segregated for a wide variety of reasons. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that was all I had. Uh, sorry for the bummer, but I just wanted to talk about no, this No, that's case. interesting, yeah. especially. Yeah. Um. Not interesting in a, like, oh, someone died way. You yeah, know I mean. yeah. In the, like, we've never heard of this, but, like, it's good to know. Mm-hmm. So if I ever hear anything else. Yeah, well, and, and then it's too, just good to get the information out there just in case. You never know. Yeah, well, and then, too, I mean, like I said, they think that the girl came from the southeast United States, like, the south, like. And, like, I've lived there, so I'm just gonna, like, okay, let me <laughs> tell all my friends to yeah. keep an eye out Well, and then just, like. I don't know. Like I said, it was a pretty local case, and so I just wanted to get it out there as much as we can. I mean, it's not like we have a wide reach, but... (laughs) Yeah, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, they were able to solve the um, East Area Rapist after how many years just because of a chance DNA profile upload, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, like, it's good to have the information regardless of, like, where you are and who you are and everything. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I have. Cool. Yeah. Again, sorry for the bummer, but I still think Frog Boys was worse because... (laughs) Uh, Frog Boys is so sad. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah. But, like, I think that was mostly worse just because, like, we had, like, the reactions of the parents and we don't have that in this case. If we did, yeah. I feel like that would be different. This but. is worse well, in sure. a different way. It is worse in a different way. Yeah. I just... This is one of the things... It's, like, basically whether you know or you don't know, it is so sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is... I mean, obviously it's sad any time a child yeah. dies, but... Yeah. So, like, I have... This is related, I promise. Like, I have this, like... You know how I'm not religious at all. My Mm -hmm. hope for my afterlife is that I just get to exist and, like, pick time periods. And I can just go back and witness all of these fucking unsolved things so I know what the fuck happened. And then I will go peacefully. (laughs) That is what I want to happen to my my spirit when I leave. (laughs) However, (laughs) you won't be able to tell anyone. I don't care. Like... I don't give a anything. shit at all. I just want to know. <laughs> I want This is Shannon. She just wants to know. I want to know what happened to D.B. Cooper. I want to know who Jack the Ripper was. And I want to know what happened to this poor little girl. <laughs> I had a friend uh, in Korea. So I was, it was fifth grade. Um, and she like swore up and down that they were related to D.B. Cooper. Okay, a lot of people say that. We don't know who D.B. Yeah. Cooper was. We have no way of Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's just a weird thing that, like, every time someone's like, D.B. Cooper, I'm like, oh, yeah, that girl yeah. I was friends with back in the day. Like, yeah. Like, we have wonder no what way... she's doing with her life. Yeah, we have no way of disproving her. That's why I get frustrated. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just one of those things. Like, it's not It's not that I necessarily believe her. It's just one of those things where I'm like, oh, yeah, she, was, she yeah. said that. Yeah. Once upon a time. This <laughs> grade was weird. Yeah. That was a weird time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have. We still don't have cool. an ending, as always. So, our ending is that we have no ending. Yes. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Triad. Our music is by Scott Buckley. Our audio is recorded by our sound engineers, Craig Bott and Audrey Credo. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr as The Triad Podcast. Our website is thetriadpodcast.wordpress.com. There, you can find information about our latest episode, including the show notes and sources. We're also on Patreon as The Triad. Currently, all Patreon funds will go towards the cost of hosting the show. Each tier has its own rewards, but every patron receives our undying gratitude. Do you have comments, questions, or stories? Email us at thetriadpod at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening to The Triad, where we're spooky but sensitive.